Hi everyone, my 36-year-old wife went to the wedding of one of her friends tonight. While there, we were hanging out and having a good time with no problems at all. While dinner was being served, my wife got up and disappeared without saying anything. As I'm eating, I realize she's dancing with someone who neither of us even knows. When she saw me make eye contact with her, she stopped and came back to the table. I asked her if she wanted to dance, then why didn't she just tell me? And I asked her why she got up and started dancing with this stranger. Her response, don't question my actions because I did this in front of you and not behind your back. To which I replied, if you do this to my face, then what have you been doing behind my back? She goes out at least once or twice a week dancing with her friends. Her face was mortified and called me an AH for even bringing up her dancing with this stranger in the first place. I forgot about it and moved on because I figured we would talk about it later. We get home. She accuses me of texting my friends heart emojis and sending a sexy gift to a girl. Right away, I hand her my phone to look through and she then said I was deleting my messages, which would have been impossible since she was next to me. And if I did, she would have been able to recover it. I feel like she's gaslighting me and now I'm really beginning to think that something deeper might be going on. But what does Reddit think? Am I the AH for questioning my wife or am I overthinking this? Edit, to clarify some things. One, thank you for all of the messages. I appreciate it. Two, she goes dancing with her friends to bars, club type bars, etc. I don't personally like it, but whenever I bring it up, she always says I know how to behave and I'm my own person who is free to do what I want. Three, the guy she is now saying is a friend of her friend who she met one time. Four, the dancing type was Spanish dancing, similar to cumbia. Five, as much as I don't like her behaviors, I try my best to keep the peace and because I don't see what happens when she goes out, it's something I usually try not to think about much. Six, after seeing your responses and typing these comments out, I think my mind is made up that her behavior when married isn't normal and shouldn't be tolerated by a spouse. Edit two, thanks again for the suggestions and I will respond to the private messages shortly. Just a few more things based off of some of the responses. One, I am a very fit male, wrestled up until last year, and you could say attractive. Two, I took dancing lessons for two years, still not great, but can do salsa, bachata, etc. Three, we do a lot of things together, dinners, dates, travel. Four, her friends are always doing the same things as other posters have mentioned. Cover for me so my boyfriend doesn't find out, though she swears she never has done anything and I try to trust her. Five, she's explosive. I get the people calling me a cuck, etc., because I let her live, but she is really big on feminism and a woman doing whatever she wants, and I try to respect it, but she doesn't believe in boundaries, as I should just trust her. Sorry for this long edit again, but I wanted to clear a few things up. Final edit for now, I will be taking your advice without revealing too much in the event she finds this. I will take a lot of the advice that you all shared and put it into action within a very short time frame. I hope to God I'm wrong, obviously, but something just isn't adding up. We don't have kids, but oh. Thank you all again. I really appreciate it, and I'll update as soon as I get some answers shortly. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, why is your wife going out dancing multiple nights a week without you? It is your marriage and life, but no way in hell would I remain married to a woman that went out multiple nights a week dancing without me. You may want to rethink staying home. Girls' nights out are far too often used as smoke screens for infidelity. Besides, her response to you seeing her dancing with that guy is suspect. I would be willing to bet she knows these guys from her girls' nights out. I wouldn't be shocked if she was cheating with that guy might want to do a little investigating. Definitely would just show up on her next night out. Comment two, I think I'm the only one confused here. Is it that rare or unusual to dance with strangers at weddings? Were they doing the lambada or something? I thought weddings were just dancing free-for-alls. Her weirdness about your phone is bizarre though. Unless she was making ridiculous accusations to you in a see how you like it way. Is this the kind of thing she has done before? So yeah, you're not the jerk for being weirded out for that part, 
but I personally would just slap my man's arm and laugh if he got mad at me for dancing with a stranger at a wedding and ask him why he wasn't dancing or why he didn't come cut in. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the support on my last post. It's been a chaotic month and I've got some serious updates for you. So, after the whole wedding fiasco, things between my wife and I were tense. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Remember how she used to go out dancing at least once or twice a week? Well, I decided to follow her one night. I know, I know, it sounds extreme, but I had to know what was going on. I watched from across the street as she entered this club with her friends. They were laughing, looking like they were having the time of their lives. I waited for what felt like hours, my mind racing with every possible scenario. Then, out she came, arm in arm with the same guy from the wedding. My heart dropped. They were laughing, and he leaned in to whisper something in her ear. I felt sick. The next day, I confronted her. I told her what I saw, and she exploded. She accused me of being controlling and paranoid. She said that the guy was just a friend and that I was making a big deal out of nothing but I couldn't let it go. I reminded her of the time she got furious when I didn't answer her texts while I was at a wrestling tournament. She had always been the jealous type, but now it seemed like she was projecting her own behavior onto me. A few days later, we were at a dinner with some friends and I noticed her phone buzz. She quickly silenced it and put it away. Later that night, I couldn't help myself. I looked at her phone while she was in the shower. There was a message from the same guy, and my heart raced as I opened it. It was a picture of a dog with a caption that said, reminds me of you, always so full of energy. I was confused. Was this their idea of flirting? I decided to dig deeper into their messages, and that's when I found it. They were planning to meet up again, but this time it was different. The messages were full of heart emojis and winking faces. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut, I remembered how she'd always been so secretive about her phone, how she'd changed the subject whenever I brought up trust and boundaries. The confrontation that followed was explosive. She denied everything, said I was reading too much into it. She brought up how I'd sent a sexy gift to a girl once, but I reminded her that it was a joke between old college friends, something she knew about. She couldn't see the double standard. In the midst of all this, I remembered how she'd always been the life of the party, how she loved the attention. It was one of the things that attracted me to her in the first place, but now it felt like a slap in the face. I thought about the times we'd go out together, how she'd dance with me, but always seemed to be looking over my shoulder as if searching for someone else. Then, just last week, I came home early from work. I walked in to find her sitting on the couch, crying. She looked up at me, her eyes red and puffy, and said she needed to tell me something. My heart was racing, preparing for the worst. She took a deep breath and said, I'm pregnant. I was stunned. We'd been trying for a while without any luck. I didn't know what to think. Was it even mine? The timing was suspicious, considering everything that had been going on. But then she showed me the ultrasound pictures, the dates matching up to when we'd been together. It was a moment of pure joy mixed with a whirlwind of doubt and confusion. We decided to put everything else aside and focus on the pregnancy. Things were going well until yesterday. I was doing some cleaning and found a receipt for a paternity test. My mind was racing again. Why would she need that if there was no doubt about the baby's father? I confronted her and she broke down, explaining that she'd done it to prove to me that the baby was mine to show that despite everything, she hadn't cheated. She'd planned to surprise me with the results, to put my mind at ease once and for all. But now I'm sitting here, wondering if I can believe her. The test confirmed I'm the father, but the trust between us is shattered. I'm trying to piece together what's left of our marriage, but it's hard. I keep thinking about the dancing, the messages, the secrecy, and now, with a baby on the way, I'm more confused than ever. My boyfriend's weird eating habits had me worried, but when I dug deeper, I uncovered his affair with my best friend. I changed the locks fast. I'm not sure if food insecurity is the correct term, but it's the term he uses to describe what this is. 
And honestly, I've been with him for three years and this is the first I'm hearing of it. So I came into this relationship with two kids, a 10 year old daughter and a 12 year old son. I didn't introduce my boyfriend and the kids until maybe eight months ago. And lately, Ben, boyfriend, has been coming and staying here with us more often than not. Sometimes he will spend days at a time here and only go home maybe once a week. Well, more and more lately, I've noticed little signs of weird food quirks of his that I'm not okay with. Like, he eats enough for easily five people's day worth of food. Or instead of letting my kids dish out their own food as I've always done, he's been doing it and giving them maybe three-fourths of what they would usually eat, but then loading his plate up to the fullest it could possibly get. I pay for all the food, just so we are aware. There was one time last week that my daughter had asked for more food, and he spoke up and said there isn't enough for everyone to have seconds. I actually stepped in and said that she could have more, and there was plenty for the kids to have seconds. I didn't tell him this, but like, I was so grossed out by it because he literally had enough on his plate to feed three people, and if he had just taken a normal helping like everyone else, then there would have been plenty left over. But anyways, I spoke to him about it that night and told him that the kids come first. They eat until they are full, and that is how it goes in my house. He kind of put his hands up and said, sorry, won't happen again, and said he just figured it wasn't fair to everyone else who wanted seconds because there wasn't enough for everyone. I'm assuming he meant himself. But anyways, he apologized, so I let it go. But then yesterday evening, he went grocery shopping for me because both my kids had events and I had a bunch of other stuff I had to do and I simply didn't have time to grocery shop as well. So he told me he would go for me. I sent him with my money, more than enough, and a very specific list. Well, I had plain bagels and original cream cheese on the list. He comes back with three different types of bagels, onion and chive, everything, cinnamon raisin, no plain as I'd asked for, and three different types of cream cheese, strawberry, blueberry, and onion. No original, but I didn't complain. It's whatever. But then this morning, my kids were making themselves bagels and like, Ben started scolding them for not using the correct cream cheese to go with the bagel. He's like, why would you even use strawberry cream cheese on an everything bagel? I bought the onion cream cheese for the everything bagels. Now what am I going to use on the cinnamon raisin bagels? Fruit cream cheese goes with these, not these. And like, he wasn't even really being nice about it either. I mean, he wasn't raising his voice, but it was the look on his face, and I was immediately turned off. It was my money that bought that food, but since he went and got it, Apparently, he feels like it's his too and can dictate how my children eat it. Anyways, he left for work, and I told him that this isn't going to work out because I can't handle his hang-ups with food. I explained it in more detail than that, listing everything I mentioned above and then some. Well, he says, I'm really sorry I have food insecurities. I know we can make this work. I will try harder to keep my mouth shut, but like... I couldn't get my daughter's face when he was scolding her out of my head and ultimately decided I could never chance that again and told him as much. He says he can't believe I'm throwing him away instead of trying to work on this. Am I the idiot? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Your kids come first when it comes to food, especially if he's having triple the servings they are or more. Scolding kids when it comes to food and making them feel bad for wanting more is a fast step towards eating disorders. I, for the life of me, can't understand people like this who would eat their fill before children. This is a good boundary for you to set. And if he isn't getting it, there are others out there who will. Comment two, not the idiot Chelmsry. And I guarantee it's not just food either. Dude has issues. If he had moved in, I guarantee you would have seen a ton more issues especially if he was having to pay for things. Like if he had to pay half the electricity, he would be making your kids go to bed as soon as it got dark or just making all sorts of asinine rules about using lights and stuff. And it would only apply to the kids, not him. Now for the update, hey Reddit, it's been a week since I posted about my boyfriend Ben and his weird food habits that were affecting my kids and me. I thought I'd give you an update because 
boy, things have taken a turn. So after I told Ben that things weren't going to work out, he left and I thought that was the end of it. But two days later, my son, who's always been a bit of a detective, found a bank statement that wasn't mine. It was Ben's and it was left in a drawer that he used when he stayed over. I wasn't gonna look, but my curiosity got the better of me. And what I found was shocking. Turns out, Ben had a lot more money than he let on. I'm talking big deposits regularly coming in. I always knew he had a good job, but this was way beyond what I thought. It didn't make any sense with his food insecurities and how he was so controlling over our groceries. I confronted him over the phone, and after some back and forth, he finally admitted that he didn't have food insecurities. He was using that as an excuse to save his own money by eating mine and the kids' food. He said he was saving up for a surprise for me, but I wasn't buying it. But here's the real kicker, Reddit. Remember how I mentioned my daughter's face when Ben scolded her? Well, she's been acting off ever since. I sat her down and asked her what was wrong, and she confessed that Ben had been taking her allowance. He told her it was a food tax for staying at our house so much, I was livid. My daughter, who had been saving up for a new bike, had been giving her money to Ben because she was scared of him. I was ready to cut Ben out for good, but then my best friend, who's been like an aunt to my kids, came over. She's been a huge support since their dad left. She told me she had something to confess. She and Ben had been seeing each other behind my back for months. She said it started when she was helping him plan this big surprise for me, which was apparently a trip to Europe. They got close, one thing led to another, and they ended up betraying me. I was heartbroken, not just because of Ben, but because my best friend, who I trusted with everything, was in on it too. She begged for my forgiveness, saying she never meant for it to go this far, but I couldn't even look at her. The confrontation was intense, I told Ben that he was never to come near me or my kids again, and I told my former best friend that our friendship was over. I've changed the locks, and I'm in the process of getting a restraining order against Ben for what he did to my daughter. As for my kids, they're shaken up, but we're working through it. I've promised them that from now on, it's just us, and I'll never let anyone come between us again. They're my world, and I should have seen the signs earlier. My boyfriend said intimacy would damage me, so I dumped him and took my stuff, but his red pill secrets and cheating were even worse. Goodbye and good riddance. I, 22-year-old female, broke up with my boyfriend, 25-year-old male, because he said he would feel bad if he ever took my virginity. I'm waiting until marriage, and me and him have been dating for about a year. He isn't a virgin, but agreed to practice celibacy because he really wanted to be with me. The other day, he made a really weird comment saying how he would feel bad if he ever had intimacy with me because he doesn't want to damage me. I took offense to this because I view intimacy as an act of love and he seems to view it as a degrading act towards me. I told him that his comment made me uncomfortable and upset and he got extremely defensive saying, would you rather me say I can't wait to frick you and use you? It was completely bizarre. He's never talked like this before and it really threw me off guard. I told him from the very beginning that I was waiting until marriage and he chose to continue pursuing me knowing this. We did talk about intimacy when we first got together and I told him my views, interests, etc. It was a conversation we had and still occasionally talk about. He agreed to continue being with me knowing all of this. After that, I told him intimacy before marriage wasn't a discussion I would like to have because my decision wouldn't change. I ended up breaking up with him and taking all of my belongings from his apartment. And while I've never experienced it, I do believe intimacy is a very sacred, intimate, and loving act. And obviously our viewpoints are very different. I date to marry, and I don't see myself marrying a man who thinks or speaks to me like that. He's been blowing up my phone and saying I'm overreacting. He's begging to fix things and talk things out but I'm refusing to even speak to him. He's saying I'm being crazy and hurting him. Am I the jerk for ending things so abruptly without talking it through? I just don't think any conversation or apology will fix this situation. Edit more context. 
The conversation came up because I've noticed he's been liking and following a lot of red pill accounts. I noticed he liked a post saying, women with a body count over zero are used goods and for recreational use only. I then asked him about it and why he felt that way. He then said he cares about me too much to damage me, which is why I got upset because he's implying that once he takes my virginity, I'll be used goods. Also, my view on my virginity has nothing to do with purity. I don't think me having intimacy before marriage would damage me or make me less valuable, or anyone for that matter. I have no problem with people who choose to have intimacy before marriage. It's just something I only want to experience with my husband. I want my first time to be special, and I only want to experience that with the person I'm going to spend my life with. On the other hand, we did do intimacy stuff. It's not like we had no intimacy chemistry whatsoever. It's just the actual act of intimacy is something I want to wait for until marriage. I don't think I'm more valuable for being a virgin, and it has nothing to do with purity or religion. Update. Me and him met today and spoke about what happened. I let him explain his side of things, and honestly, it didn't make the situation better, but made it extremely worse. He said that my virginity was a part of the chase, and that's what men enjoy most about speaking to and dating women. He said he didn't want the chase to end because it kept him going. He also said that me not having intimacy with anyone makes me a real woman, and that after I have intimacy, I wouldn't be ladylike anymore. He explained that he loved me and that he was sorry, and he'll do anything to try and fix it. But that's just how men are and how the male brain works. I ended it off saying he needs to reconsider the content he consumes because it's only going to do him harm in the long run. I told him I wish him the best, but he needs to really change his ways and his beliefs if he wants a loving, lasting relationship. The reality is, he completely did a 180. He has never talked or acted like this before, and it's genuinely scary how easily and fast he's been influenced and brainwashed. At this point, I don't feel safe or secure with him. I wouldn't say the breakup was mutual, but it's over and I'm happy with my decision to end things. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, when you want to only have intimacy after marriage, you are selecting for men who view intimacy as a sacred act and as damaging. That is just taking your philosophy to the end. If you hold virginity as something that you only give to someone you're married to, don't be surprised that you attract men who view intimacy as damaging because they will make you lose your virginity, something that you saved up and considered sacred for all your life. The majority of men who are willing to wait until marriage for intimacy are conservative and misogynist. Comment two, I never understand these posts to be honest. What is the point exactly? OP wants to break up or did in fact break up because she wanted to. This is fine. No validation is needed, and even if 95% of responses said, geez, it's 2024, this is very odd, then clearly nothing would change. So does OP just want to read loads of posts saying, right on, sister? Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been a month since I last posted about my breakup with my ex-boyfriend, and oh boy, do I have an update for you. Buckle up, because this has been a rough ride. So after the breakup, my ex wouldn't stop blowing up my phone. He was begging for another chance, saying he'd change and that he couldn't live without me. I was firm in my decision, but he was persistent. I finally agreed to meet him, thinking maybe he had reflected on his behavior. I was wrong. We met at a coffee shop and he started off by apologizing, but then he dropped a bombshell. He said that my virginity was part of the chase for him and that it was what kept him interested. He claimed that men are wired to enjoy the pursuit and that after conquering a woman, she loses her appeal. I was disgusted. It was like he saw me as some prize to be won, not a person. He went on to say that he thought of me as a real woman because I hadn't had intimacy and that having intimacy would make me less ladylike. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This was the guy who had agreed to respect my decision to wait until marriage the guy who had seemed so understanding and supportive at first. I told him that his views were warped and that he needed to seriously reconsider the content he was consuming. It was clearly having a negative impact on his perception of women and relationships. I wished him the best, 
but I also made it clear that we were done for good. Now, here's where things get even crazier. After our conversation, I found out through mutual friends that he had been seeing someone else while we were still together. Apparently, he had been cheating on me with a girl from his gym for months. And get this, she was someone who had slept with other guys before, which completely contradicted everything he said about virginity and real women. The news hit me like a ton of bricks. I felt betrayed and hurt, but also relieved that I had ended things when I did. It was clear that he was a hypocrite and didn't actually believe the things he said to me. But wait, there's more. The girl he cheated on me with? She dumped him. Turns out she found out about his red pill beliefs and was completely turned off. She told him she didn't want to be with someone who viewed women as objects to be chased and conquered. And here's the subtle twist of karma. My ex is now alone and miserable. He lost both of us because of his toxic mindset and behavior. He's been trying to reach out to me again, but I've blocked him on everything. I'm moving on with my life, and I'm focusing on myself and my future. To add to the backstory, my ex had always been a bit of a smooth talker. He knew exactly what to say to make someone feel special. That's why I fell for him in the first place. He was charming, attentive, and seemed genuinely interested in my beliefs and values. But as time went on, I started to notice little red flags. He would make offhand comments about other women or joke about things that didn't sit right with me. I brushed them off, thinking they were just slip-ups. Looking back, I can see that those were signs of his true beliefs creeping through. It's like he had this hidden side that he kept under wraps until he couldn't hold it in anymore. And when it finally came out, it was uglier than I could have ever imagined. I've been doing a lot of reflecting since the breakup. I realized that I ignored my gut feelings about him because I wanted to believe in the good. But now I know better. I've learned that actions speak louder than words and someone's true colors will always show in the end. So that's where I'm at now. I'm single, healing, and learning from this experience. I'm also more determined than ever to find someone who respects me and my choices. Someone who loves me for me, not for some twisted idea of what a woman should be. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.